Um, I'm Uts Westerhoff, and this is my office. It's in the former prison blockage port, bang in the town, city of Leeuwarden. This is where I work very hard on Leeuwarden being capital of culture of Europe in 2018. Every day when I pass through the gate, I think about my father. He was imprisoned here by the Nazis because of so-called illegal activities. My father was a member of a poor family in one of the poorest regions in the Netherlands. In his, his family, at 14, children left home and went to work on a farm in the neighborhood. My father's brother went to work on a farm owned by a Nazi. He ended up as a volunteer for the Waffenisses. By the time my father was imprisoned, his brother fought in Russia at the Eastern Front. After the war ended, my father immediately had to go into military service. He was sent out to Indonesia to save this overseas territory for the Kingdom of the Netherlands. He was wounded badly in a fight and shipped back home. By the time he came home, his brother was released from prison and the two brothers met again. Together, they dealt with their war trauma, with the only therapy they had available, drinking, fighting, and chasing women. They kept this up for a year. And then they both got married and started a family. In 1964, my uncle died. In 1965, on a Sunday in May, I was born on my uncle's birthday. And my father gave me his brother's name, Uts. As all men of and women of his generation, my father seldom looked back. He was eager to make the world a better place. As a carpenter, he literally rebuilt the country. In the spare time, he was a volunteer in the church, school, union, and he lived in a world that was very organized. All people and institutions had their designated place in society. Together with his generation, he built the welfare state. In 1988, my father died. For many reasons, I consider that the end of an era. The crisis of the 80s brought us a government that liked to speak about the Netherlands as an enterprise, a company. The market metaphor took hold of all public institutions. And the most popular studies were economics and management. Dominant literature was neoliberal. Efficiency and upscaling became the sole aim of both management and politics. And the economy became booming. In future, historians might consider the 90s of the last century more important than the 60s. The baby boomers were still alive and kicking, and the generations behind them were celebrating all the freedom they had. The end of nations was proclaimed and the Cold War ended. And then the planes hit New York and the crisis came. The crisis we are still in today. To me, to my opinion, the, this crisis is foremost a post-traumatic stress disorder. A trauma constantly triggered by words like terrorist, euro, profits, loss, and consumer confidence. But behind the triggers is the cause. 
we Europeans have become too dependent on large-scale institutions with nothing but efficiency and profit in mind, whether it's government, social institutions, or enterprise. With this mindset comes central decision-making, and by only a few people within large institutions. This makes the distance between the individual and the decision-maker bigger and bigger. And people feel powerless. They get frustrated or panic. And frustration and panic have mean and dangerous sides. When it gets out of hand, people freeze or behave like victims and even results to violent nationalism. But there's another side. In the last decades, we built a beautiful infrastructure in Europe <coughs> that made it very easy for us to connect, to exchange ideas and goods. And to enjoy that, we have to refocus. Let us forget about the market metaphor. People's concern is not about institutions. They care about the elderly and the ill. They care about the quality of the education of their children. They care about the quality of water or the quality of food. And the solutions for these serious questions won't come from government, unions, churches, industry, banks, or other important 20th century institutions. Because they have too much trouble with surviving. Their leaders are often focused on their own interest or only on the interest of their own enterprise. I would like to turn the way we work around. I would like to work on a movement that invites people to participate on a local level. This is where our concept of open communities comes in. In open communities, people take responsibility for the quality of the direct environment they live in. One of our advisors for 2018 is Mark Nelson. He used Facebook and other social media to show that there are vivid communities between Palestinians and Israeli. The institutional crisis is between the two people, but on a level of friendship and relations of people, there is the joy of friendship. There are beautiful examples of people that start a corporation to organize their own care. In the Netherlands, there is an initiative of parents that like to start their own kindergarten. And because they trust each other in, in raising children, but they have a fight with the institutions because of quality and other regulations of institutions but they trust each other, and that's much more important. Here in the city of Leeuwarden, there is a pop stage, totally made by the people who wanted to have a pop stage. And they connect all over the world with pop stages to organize good concerts. The community of people interested in that is very important. And that is, to me, where we have to work on. We've been brainwashed by the idea in thinking that things like building houses are things only to be solved on a central level by large-scale builders. But that's not the truth. Those central organizations are not strong enough anymore. The paradox we have to live with is that although the questions we have to deal with are too big to solve on a local level, we have to take action. Let us do the unexpected thing and start solving problems that are too big to solve on a local level. Because if you do that on a way with open communities, you connect with other communities. And you can share experiences 
and then it makes sense to take action. Open communities give us the power of the cooperative collective. They use the power of differences, and since they share these differences, they get stronger. Open communities will improve our social, economical, and ecological system. And since people are invited to participate, they will feel involved again. They feel, will feel commitment, they will feel development. And those are important pillars for general happiness. Back to my job. Open communities are the base for Lille Wallen 2008. Our open communities will, together with artists and cultural operators from all over the world, create a beautiful program full of inspiring projects. And together, we will strengthen society again. Now, at this moment, in our cities, there are a lot of young people that have the power to overcome the crisis we're living now. Let us go back to my father and my uncle. They were raised in conflict and poverty. They suffered the ultimate crisis, the crisis of soldiers involved in conflicts of life and death. Opposites each other in the biggest ideological clash we ever had. And they found a way out. They refocused and started to rebuild our society. I consider my job as a sign of honor to that mindset. Let's have their spirit. Let us accept the crisis, accept the traumas, and start to live and build again. Thank you.